Hi everyone, Mr. Neighbor here, and today we're going to talk about graphing data, the Three, last section of chapter two, one. one. Uh, a few graphs that I want you to be aware of are bar graphs, pie charts, and line graphs. We're most commonly going to look at line graphs down here. Um, and let's just look at some examples on how to interpret these graphs. So here's a pie chart. Um, we want to know what percent of the gross pay is used for insurance. So first we have to look at our pie chart and look for insurance. So insurance is purple, so 88. Um, but how much is the total? Uh, it says out of a salary of 800. So how much is a percent? Remember, a percent's a part out of a whole. So I have to take the 88 divided by 800. I get out 0 0.11, which as a percent is 11%. Uh, what percent of the 800 is actually taken home each week? So take home pay is in blue right here. That's 540. So same thing, 540 divided by 800 will give us out 0 0.675. So written as a percent would be 67.5%. Let's try another one. Uh, this is the distribution of wholesale price for a $425 color television. What percent of the wholesale price is the cost of labor? So the cost of labor is $130. And it costs $425. So when we divide those, we get out 0 0.306. Written as a percent would be 30.6%. What of the wholesale price... What would be the wholesale price if no tariff taxes was paid on imported goods? So if we refuse to pay the taxes, which was $40, um, that would just be $425 minus that $40 minus $40, which would give us $385, which is what we have down there. All right, here we have a bar graph of birthdays of students by month. So what month? has the same number of birthdays as February. So February looks to have four right here. Go across, it looks like November also has four. How many students are in the class total? So we have a bar graph and those bar graphs go up to certain heights which represent the number of students. So if we just look at all those heights and look at what values they are for number of students and add all those together, we'll get out the total, which is 63 students. Here we have a company's oil production, and the bar graph is now um, switched on us, so it's horizontal. Um, how many more barrels of oil are indicated for the company in 2005 than in 1985? So 2005 is right here, 1985 is right here, and we're looking for the gap between these two, so how much this is. So it looks like, if I kind of drag down here, there's 400 million right here, and I would say that's five, um, and this is broken into one, two, three, four categories, so 25, 50, 75, so I'd say this is 5.75. So 4 million and 5.75 million, and um, when you subtract those two, you would get out an answer of um, eight, one, the 1,800 million barrels. Sorry, I had an extra zero here that I didn't need. Uh, when you do the calculation, it will be uh, 180 million, depending on how you kind of round it. I rounded it different with that 5.75. So I got out um, 175 million for the difference. Um, next question, judging from the graph, should uh, the oil company, should company oil production in 2010 be more or less than in 2005? Uh, so if we just look at trends, it looks like the oil production is going up. So we would answer more. So here we have a line graph. Um, this line graph has some trends shown to us uh, with uh, the up and down lines um, given. And a lot of times we'll just have points. We don't necessarily have the lines filled in for us. 
Um, so from 2005 to 2010 was the rate of deforestation increasing or decreasing. So let's select that 2005, which would be right here, to 2010, which is right here. Uh, looks like it was high, it's going low, so that would mean decreasing. How many acres of land was deforested in 1995? So 95 would be right here. It looks like that's where that peak is. And if I go over, looks like 11,000. So I typed it wrong, but I fixed it with my little, little pen. 11,000 square miles. The U.S. federal minimum wage. So during what year was the federal minimum wage the closest to being outside the poverty threshold? So poverty threshold is here in green. Where is the minimum wage closest to that? So it looks like there. That's the closest we ever get to the poverty level. So if we kind of scroll down and look and see where that's at. Um, there's 1960, 1965, 1970. So it looks like it's around the 1968 range. So what was the minimum wage at that time when it was adjusted for minimum for inflation. So at this time, what was the price or what was the minimum wage? Looks a little, so we got 10, 11, 12. So I would say it's around 10, 1025, 1050, something like that. And then after that point with inflation, they readjusted it. So they dropped down the minimum wage because a dollar was worth more than it was prior to that. Uh, that's all the examples we have, but just a few notes. When you're actually graphing data, uh, you want to make sure you know which quantities you're actually measuring. So then you have the two axes um, or, you know, what you're putting into your pie chart. You're putting in um, cost into your pie chart or your um, number of people into pie chart form. Um, but just make sure you know what quantities you're looking at. Uh, make sure you know which is the independent and which is the dependent variable. Uh, make a table of your data if you need to. Uh, set a scale for your graph that matches the table. Um, don't count by ones if all your data is in increments of 25s. Or uh, like 25s might be an example of you count by 25 cents each time. Or you're counting by 25 years each time. So don't put tick marks every one. Um, put a, a tick mark for every 25. And then when you go ahead and plot your data on your graph, Make sure you have your axes labeled, you have your scale, and you have a title. Those are all the properties, the things that you need for a, for a good graph so that people reading your graph know what you're talking about.